In less than a human lifetime, we went from propellers to stealth, from machine guns to missiles that can hit targets beyond the horizon, from pilots using their eyes to aircraft that can see in all directions at once. Now, while the world races to build sixth-generation fighters, let's do something bold. Let's look even further, past the bleeding edge of what's possible. Because if you think today's aircraft are incredible, you haven't seen anything yet. The current state of fighter development, right now, in secure facilities across America, our brightest minds are working on something extraordinary. The next-generation air dominance fighter. But we're not alone in this race. For the first time since the Cold War, the entire world seems to be sprinting toward the same goal. Master sixth-generation fighter technology. Let's start here at home. The U.S. Air Force has already flown a full-scale NGAD demonstrator, something that caught many by surprise. Picture an aircraft that can cruise at 1,500 miles per hour without afterburners, control entire squadrons of autonomous wingmen, and spot threats from hundreds of miles away. That's just what we know about. Remember when the F-22 Raptor first rolled out in 1997? Many thought it would remain unmatched for decades. Then came the F-35 Lightning II, changing everything we knew about information warfare in the sky. Now, NGAD aims to make even these incredible machines look like yesterday's news. But cross the Atlantic, and you'll find our allies aren't sitting idle. The British Tempest program, named after their legendary World War II fighter, has partnered with Italy and Japan. They're promising an aircraft that can fire hypersonic missiles and deploy laser weapons by 2035. Meanwhile, France, Germany, and Spain have joined forces on their future combat air system. Think about that. Former adversaries now building tomorrow's defender together. They're not just developing a fighter, they're creating an entire system of systems, including AI-controlled drone swarms. In the Pacific, Japan's FX program is pushing boundaries we didn't even know existed. They're working on engines that could thrust the aircraft from Washington, D.C. to New York City in just 15 minutes. And let's not forget China. Their mysterious Project 259 aims to field a sixth-generation fighter before 2035. Even Russia, despite current challenges, is conceptualizing their next-generation fighter. The same country that gave us the MiG-21 and Su-27 isn't about to sit this one out. But here's what makes this global race different from anything we've seen before. It's not just about who can fly higher or faster anymore. The real competition is in areas our World War II veterans could never have imagined. Artificial intelligence, autonomous systems, directed energy weapons, and quantum sensors. Think about this. The F-4 Phantom, which many of you might remember from Vietnam, had about 8 miles of wiring. The F-35 has 28 miles. These 6th generation fighters were looking at enough computing power to run a small city. And the cockpit? Gone are the days of dozens of gauges and switches. Today's pilots, and tomorrow's even more so, are more like system managers, commanding an orchestra of sensors and AI assistants that extend their awareness far beyond human limitations. This isn't just another step forward. It's a revolution in military aviation. Every major power is betting billions that these aircraft will redefine air warfare for the rest of this century. The U.S. alone has committed over $20 billion to NGAD through 2027. But here's the real kicker. As incredible as these sixth-generation fighters sound, they might be the last generation we label with a number. And that's where our story about seventh-generation fighters takes an unexpected turn. The generational paradox. Here's a truth that might surprise you, something that's been keeping Pentagon planners up at night. The seventh-generation fighter might never exist, not because we can't build it, but because we're about to break the entire generational system itself. Let me take you back in time. When Chuck Yeager first broke the sound barrier in 1947, fighter development was straightforward. Each new generation brought clear, revolutionary changes that everyone could understand. First came the first generation, bringing a fundamental shift to jet power. The F-86 Sabre flying at speeds of up to 700 miles per hour, revolutionized air combat. Korean War veterans will remember how it dominated the skies, outmaneuvering everything in its path. Then, the 1950s introduced the second-generation fighters, capable of breaking the sound barrier. The F-104 Starfighter, nicknamed the missile with a man in it, could reach speeds of over 1,500 miles per hour, making the first-generation Sabre look like a crop duster. The Vietnam era ushered in the third-generation fighter with the legendary F-4 Phantom. Equipped with advanced radar and missiles capable of hitting targets beyond visual range, it transformed aerial warfare forever. Many of you might remember seeing 
seeing these mighty machines thundering overhead. The fourth generation gave us the fighters many of your children might have flown, the F-15 Eagle and F-16 Fighting Falcon. Digital displays replaced analog gauges. Computers helped pilots fly better than ever before. Then came stealth, the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II, fifth-generation fighters that could slip through enemy radar like ghosts. They didn't just improve on what came before, they rewrote the rules of aerial combat. Now we're seeing sixth-generation concepts. These aren't just aircraft, they're flying supercomputers that can control drone swarms, fire directed energy weapons, and operate with or without pilots. The power requirements for these systems are so enormous that engineers are developing entirely new forms of propulsion. But here's where everything changes. Modern fighters are becoming more like your grandkids' smartphones than traditional aircraft. The F-35 you see flying today can download new capabilities overnight, just like your iPhone gets software updates. Think about that. An aircraft that can learn new tricks while sitting in its hangar. And these new fighters? They're built like high-tech Lego sets. Need better radar? Swap out a module. Want improved electronic warfare capabilities? Install a new component. The entire aircraft is designed to evolve constantly. The Pentagon made another revolutionary decision. They now own the software code for these aircraft. That's like having the recipe for Coca-Cola, not just the drink itself. They're no longer tied to specific companies for upgrades. Here's why this matters. Back in 1965, an F-4 Phantom cost about $2.4 million. That's roughly $22 million in today's money. A modern F-35 costs around $80 million. Future fighters? We're looking at price tags north of $300 million each. Building entirely new generations every few decades just isn't sustainable anymore. Instead of waiting 25 years between generations, the Air Force is talking about fielding new designs every 5 to 10 years. But these won't be new generations. They'll be evolutions of existing platforms, getting smarter and more capable with each update. Artificial intelligence is changing everything. Today's fighters can process more information than entire squadrons of older aircraft. They can learn from every mission, adapt to new threats, and even control teams of autonomous drones. The pilot is becoming more of a tactical commander than a traditional aviator. Success in future conflicts won't just be about who has the fastest aircraft or the most powerful radar. It'll be about who has the best software, the most advanced AI, and the ability to coordinate massive amounts of information in real time. So while we're all focused on sixth-generation fighters, we're actually witnessing something more profound, the end of the generation system itself. The future isn't about big leaps forward every few decades. It's about continuous evolution, constant improvement, and adaptability. But this raises an intriguing question. If we did push beyond these limitations, if we did imagine what lies beyond the sixth generation, what would that look like? The answer might just redefine everything we know about air combat. Theoretical seventh-generation capabilities. What I'm about to share with you might sound like science fiction, but remember, in 1947, breaking the sound barrier seemed impossible too. Let's push beyond today's limitations and imagine what might lie ahead. Remember when jet engines first replaced propellers? We're about to see an even bigger revolution in how we power our aircraft. Engineers are working on what they call hybrid propulsion systems. Imagine combining the raw power of a traditional jet engine with something entirely new. First, let's talk about scramjets, supersonic combustion ram jets. Unlike traditional jet engines that slow incoming air to subsonic speeds, scramjets can burn fuel in supersonic airflow. Think about that for a moment. An engine that works better the faster you go. While traditional engines start losing efficiency at high speeds, scramjets are just getting warmed up. They could push aircraft to speeds over Mach 5. That's about 3,800 miles per hour at high altitude. But scramjets are just the beginning. Engineers are also developing plasma propulsion systems, literally creating superheated gas that can push an aircraft to speeds over Mach 7. That's more than 5,300 miles per hour. At those speeds, you could fly from New York to Los Angeles in just 30 minutes. The real breakthrough would be combining these technologies. Imagine an aircraft that uses conventional engines for takeoff, switches to scramjets for high-speed crews, and then engages plasma propulsion for maximum performance. Each system compensates for the other's limitations. Traditional engines handle low speeds, scramjets provide efficient high-speed crews, and plasma drives deliver that extra burst of speed when needed. But speed isn't everything. These new engines would be smart, automatically switching between different power modes. Need to cruise efficiently? Use the conventional system. Want to penetrate heavily defended airspace? Engage the scramjets. Need to escape a threat? Fire up the plasma drive. It's like having a Prius, a NASCAR engine, and a rocket motor all in one vehicle. 
physical, with the aircraft's computer deciding which one to use at any given moment. Now, let's talk about what these aircraft might be made of. Forget aluminum and steel, we're looking at materials that can think for themselves. Imagine an aircraft's skin that can heal itself when damaged, just like your own skin heals a cut. These smart materials can change their shape on command. Wings that can extend for low-speed flight, then sweep back for supersonic dash. The entire aircraft could modify its shape to be optimal for any mission phase. But here's where it gets really interesting. Metamaterials. These aren't just advanced composites. They're materials engineered at the molecular level to do things nature never intended. They could bend light around the aircraft, making it virtually invisible to both radar and the naked eye. Remember when computers filled entire rooms? Today's smartphone has more computing power than all of NASA had during the Apollo missions. Now, imagine an aircraft with an artificial artificial brain more powerful than a thousand smartphones combined. This isn't just about processing data, it's about true artificial intelligence. The aircraft would learn from every mission, every engagement, every flight. It could predict threats before they appear, make split-second decisions faster than any human pilot, and coordinate with dozens of autonomous wingmen simultaneously. The cockpit itself would be revolutionary. Instead of traditional controls, pilots would interface with the aircraft through what we call a neural link, essentially controlling it with their thoughts. The entire airframe could become transparent using advanced optical systems, giving pilots unlimited visibility in any direction. Now, this is where things get really interesting. Forget missiles and bullets. We're talking about directed energy weapons. Imagine a beam of focused energy that can disable enemy electronics from miles away, or hypersonic projectiles that can hit targets on the other side of the planet in minutes. These weapons would be precise beyond anything we've ever seen. They could target specific systems on enemy aircraft without destroying the whole planet. They could intercept incoming missiles with pinpoint accuracy, creating an almost impenetrable defense shield. The real game changer isn't just about what this aircraft could do, it's about what it could know. Quantum sensors would allow it to detect disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field, literally seeing through clouds, mountains, or buildings. This aircraft wouldn't just operate in the air, it could seamlessly transition between air, space, and even underwater operation. Using those advanced metamaterials, it could create a bubble of air around itself, allowing it to dive into the ocean and emerge anywhere on the planet. All of this would be connected through what we call multi domain operations. The aircraft would coordinate with satellite, ships, ground forces, and even underwater sensors, creating a complete picture of the battlefield in real time. But here's what makes all this truly revolutionary. It's not just about having better technology. It's about having technology that can think for itself, adapt to any situation, and work alongside human pilots in ways we've never seen before. The seventh generation, if it ever exists, wouldn't just be a better aircraft. It would be a new form of life, a partnership between human human and machine that could redefine not just aerial combat, but the very nature of warfare itself. And that brings us to our final question. How would all this change the future of combat? Impact on future combat. So what does all this mean for the future of aerial combat? How would these technologies change the way we fight wars? Let's put all these pieces together and paint a picture of tomorrow's battlefield. Imagine this. It's 2055. A crisis erupts halfway around the world. Within hours, these advanced aircraft could reach any point on the globe. But they wouldn't fly alone. Each would command a swarm of autonomous drones, creating a network of sensors and weapons spanning hundreds of miles. The battlefield itself would be transformed. These aircraft wouldn't just dominate the skies, they'd control space and sea as well. They could dive from the edge of space to the ocean's surface, transition seamlessly between air and water, and emerge anywhere on the planet. The old boundaries between air force, navy, and space operations would blur and eventually disappear. Combat would happen at speeds beyond human comprehension. When threats appear, the AI would react in microseconds, coordinating with other aircraft, analyzing countless options, and executing the optimal response before a human pilot could even blink. But here's the key. Humans wouldn't be replaced they'd be enhanced. The aircraft would handle the split-second decisions while pilots focus on strategy and oversight. Information would become the most powerful weapon. These aircraft would share data instantly across vast distances, creating a real-time map of everything happening in the battle space. Every sensor, every platform, every system working together as one integrated force. But perhaps the most profound impact wouldn't be technological at all. It would be psychological. The mere existence of these capabilities could prevent 
conflicts from starting. After all, how do you fight an adversary that can see everything, be anywhere, and react faster than humanly possible? As we look back at how far we've come, from the Wright brothers to hypersonic flight, from simple radar to quantum sensors, one thing becomes clear. The future of aerial combat will be limited only by our imagination. Whether we ever see an aircraft officially labeled as seventh generation doesn't really matter. What matters is that we're witnessing the birth of something entirely new. Just think, many of you watching, remember when the F-4 Phantom was the cutting edge of technology. Now imagine what your grandchildren might fly, or rather what might fly alongside them. The future of air combat isn't just about building better aircraft, it's about redefining what's possible. And if history has taught us anything, it's that what seems impossible today often becomes tomorrow's reality.